grab it here. Uh, we got something a little bit interesting to look at this time also. And I'm um, going to have a look at an Amiga 2000 motherboard that I've been able to acquire. And um, I'm just going to give a little bit of a background uh, about the uh, Commodore Amiga 2000 for those that are not familiar with the subject. So it was released in 1987. So that's um, 36 years ago. <laughs> so it's a relatively old technology. Um, it um, died in 1991. So yeah. I don't have sales figures worldwide, but um, uh, it reportedly sold around 125,000 units in Germany alone. So it um, gives a kind of a slice. Um, like the most of the Amigas, it's based on the Motorola 68000 by default. And um, it has one megabit um, of um, memory. and you could have up to 9 megabits of um, memory. So let's take a little look at what it um, looks like. So it was my, uh, typical for the times, so it was one of these beige boxes. Um, used to come with um, floppy disk drives, so there'll be the one or two. And then the opening in the bottom is for a five and a quarter inch drive. And then it had a separate keyboard um, and a mouse, typical to the uh, Amiga series. And then in the back it basically has the same um, connector, serial, RGB, parallel port, um, uh, audio out, uh, as um, uh, all the other Amiga open computers have. Yeah, so let's continue. Let's. Um, have a look what it looks like inside. It's the basic overview. So you have they've stuck the main board in the bottom of the box, and then you had a power supply, and then you had the two disk drives, and that was pretty much it for the, for the base model. Um, this was the first Amiga that actually allowed um, the usage of expansion cards, and, and, and I must say for its um, for its day it was rather interesting. Um, it had the uh, larger slots on the um, here on the um, that would be on the right hand side uh, of the unit. It um, has um, a CPU uh, MMU expansion slot. And then it has so-called Zorro 2 card slots. And the interesting thing with the Zorro 2 bus was the idea that you could have a Buster Mus Buster a bus master switch option. So you could put in a car that could actually take over the whole computer. So that, that's what. Uh, and then um, it also, in addition to that, it had um, uh, PC XT uh, ESA slots up here. And um, what you could do is that this is uh, you could put in a A2088 bridge board card, uh, which would add a fully functional IBM PC XT to the unit um, with expansion card op uh, options. <laughs> uh, really advanced for its time. And then you had a video slot, which is actually hidden behind uh, on the side of the power supply. You had a dedicated slot where you could add, add on um, video devices. Um, yeah, yeah, this had a battery backed up real time clock built in into the um, unit by default. So. Now. When it comes to upgrading, you could go you could go nuts with upgrading this thing. Uh, you you could, um, as I said, with this br bridge board uh, concept, you could go two eight six three eight six four eight six for um, uh, PCs, so you could get up to the four eight six level. Huh? I think there was even a so-called Pentium model, but I can't be sure. 
might have never existed. Uh, and then in when the, for the Motorola CPUs, you could actually do um, 6, 8,010, and that could actually just be swapped out onto the motherboard itself, and then you had expansion cards, uh, 6, 8,020, 30, 40, and um, 60. I don't know where they dropped the 50, was there a 50? I'm not sure there was a 50, but many different um, CPU upgrade options. Um, also, you could have a hard drive. Uh, usually it was a SCSI controller, so it was a so-called SCSI um, hard drive interface. And, and then, of course, different categories of memory expansion you could add. And they, they actually, even in those days when it wasn't really much of a networking, uh, it was just like coming in and there was uh, sort of available different, you know, not that many, but, but it was just on the borderline where networking was coming, so you could actually, you could have some networking. Um, so that's um, the background. I just thought I'd just give a, a little bit of an overview. Um, and um, the sad thing is that this was a technical, a, a little bit of a technical marvel in its day. It was very competitive and very highly advanced. Uh, and um, it was just yet another one of those techn uh, technicals. Uh, competitors to the PC that got steamrolled by the um, PC technology. <laughs> so in the day when this came out, PC technology was not that good, but um, you know it, it just continued advancing and advancing. And then of course the economy of scale took over. Um, basically, eco ec yeah. Well, my main point here was that basically it, it, it wasn't the technology that um, it was the problem. It was the Ultimately, it was the economics. So, you, you know, small company like Commodore building a custom hardware solution, software solution, it, there was no way to compete with um, mass produced um, PC technology with standardized software. So, at the end of the day, it just ended up <laughs> yeah, dying. But I, I am going to actually try and um, get get myself a working on it. 2000. So, so let's have a yeah. So the next thing is to actually have a look at the um, main board that I was able to acquire and see what we're dealing with. So now it's time to look at the board. So um, it's the front. So you have the joystick, mouse connector, keyboard. Should be parallel serial and one disk drive. I can't remember which is which. And then you have, um, I think, the audio and video. The, one of these is video, I think, and then the uh, right left for um, audio. Probably those are the audio, and that's the video composite. No, not uh, yeah, monochrome out as they used to have. And um, so if I hold it up. So here's the ESA slots, and then you put the bridge port you put over here. So I think it uses these both slots here, and then this is the Zoro 2 slots, and then this is the um, CPU uh, MMU slot, and then this is the video videos um, expansion slot. And then you have the power connector, and then it was for disk drive. Actually, I didn't look it up. Um, or another serial connector, I can't remember which. Well, one, of, one of them's for the floppy disk drive, I don't remember what the other one is for. It looks like it's connected to this. Yeah. Because it does have two floppy disk drives. There was some, some weird with the cables and stuff when, you're gonna, when you want to have two uh, floppy disk drives. And um, 
quite extensive um, main board real estate so it has pretty much the same uh, chipset solution as other Amigas. Uh, this is the uh, more later, this is the revision 6 version of um, the motherboard. So actually the chips, that, uh, the chips used uh, are, are quite close to what's used in an Amiga 500. So, um, so I've not powered this up. Oh yeah, and then it had, the, had a battery there. It wasn't actually on the board, it was just hanging on these wires, so I just cut it out. The battery might be new, might not be, but I've, I'm going to replace it anyway. Um, so, um, I did a little bit of... So as you see, it hasn't been cleaned, so it needs to be cleaned, but uh, I did some initial research. And um, I actually do have an Omega 500 Plus that I'm restoring, so what I did is I did um, chip swaps to um, uh, to test the uh, yeah not all the chips because you can't test this one for example but I um, took some of the chips and um, cross swapped them to see that they work and um, I found out that oh, oh did I oh pushed it in too hard this one's dead so that's one of the I/O chips so this one heats up like really a lot and um, <laughs> it create, creates a bus crash and so uh, when I put it on the uh, 500 plus then then it, it didn't boot and it was dead so obviously this one used here would cause this board to totally not work and then um, when I was doing the chip swap then sadly this one lost its leg and that's an indication that this a bit of corrosion going on in the board so um, because I thought I was being as careful as well. Now this can be fixed so I might actually add a small clip of how you can um, address this. This is not serious. I mean uh, there is a or there are several methods to get that quite nicely repaired. But um, we'll see here. I'm just gonna leave it in its place right now. sit there right now. And um, yeah, this uh, I.O. chip I've, oh, I've ordered, a, you can't say new one, I, I've ordered a replacement. <laughs> and um, when it came, actually I forgot to take out the I was going to prepare by taking them to show you. It came with a 6 8000 CPU, but um, that also had a pin broken. So, what I did is I bought these are so the 6 8000 CPUs are so cheap, so I bought a new one and then I cross swapped it also when it arrived with the Omega 500 just to make sure that the CPU is working. So, I'm using the new CPU here. And uh, what um, is interesting is that this chip obviously was broken and it completely would have stopped this from working. So, um, and obviously this uh, battery has been leaking. And what usually happens with the Amiga is that when the battery leaks then it sprays acid over the CPU here and then corrodes the um, legs and then it goes into the um, actual socket. So they've actually swapped out the socket to that kind of a higher quality so a socket type. And um, they've also swapped out the socket for the ROM which I don't really know why. So they've, they've done CPU, ROM and then they've continued and they've tried to um, take out the bridge here, this buffer buffer bridge and when they put it back they succeeded in putting it in at an angle so it's not seated in correctly when they 
so we'll do it in. So I don't know if they were just like, you know, uh, like when you logically when you fix, you, you 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 don't know what you're really doing, and you just oh change processor. Well, they saw that the 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 socket was damaged, so they changed the socket. Um, uh, tested possibly another CPU and then they just moved on and changed the socket for the ROM which I don't have no maybe that was also damaged the thing is you don't know if they actually did a bit of cleaning of the board uh, I mean it is possible that um, also that got corrosion damage so. but I don't know why they messed with this the, those. or then they just used the logic of swap out swap out swap out oh it didn't work as too much work to scrap it, and this was broken all the time. <laughs> so, so if you, if you if you put that in there, that this this ain't gonna start, and I can guarantee you. It, and and the thing is, it was very obvious this is broken. It, 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 number one, the Omega 500 was plus was dead, and this was getting very very hot. Like these chips don't usually get very hot. So then it was like, ow. So yeah. So that's kaput. Um, so that's the, uh, it's, uh, as I said, it's a Rev Revision Sex 6 motherboard. Um, generally speaking, not in that bad shape. Um, not super happy with the soldering they've been doing on the, uh, on the CPU. You know, could be better quality, but might be cold solder especially on this bridge section here but uh, otherwise it's not in bad shape corrosion damage is not extensive so um, I think we can um, rely on the fact that we could possibly get this fixed so the idea is to um, clean it and then apply some power and um, see if it works and, um, that will come up in the following videos, so if you're interested in seeing if I can get this to alive again, um, you know, hit the bell icon, consider subscribing, and join the fun. Or maybe it'll just be a lot of tears. <laughs> okay, see you in the next one.